Hi everyone, today we'll be talking about the application of chromatography in modern science and industry. But before we begin, allow me to introduce our team members who work together on this project. My name is Nur Farah Zati. With me are Farah Amira, Hani Zarifa, Nur Asila, and Kasrina Malini. Now that you've met the team, let's jump into the fascinating world of chromatography. Chromatography is a collection of analytical and preparative techniques used to separate, identify, and quantify components of a mixture. It relies on two phases, which are stationary phase and mobile phase. Chromatography starts with yearly experiments by Fred Lipranch and Goppels Rudder. They studied color reaction and simple separation technique. In the early 19, Michael Vett invented chromatography. He used it to separate plant pigments, and that's where the term chromatography comes from. It means color writing. In the 1940, Archer J.P. Martin and Richard Singh improved the technique. They create partition chromatography. Martin and Singh introduce gas chromatography. Let's and Ruven create gel filtration while Porat and Flodin develop size exclusion chromatography in 1959. Sabah Hovet helped start modern chromatography. He worked on high performance liquid chromatography known as HPLC. In 1970 to 1990, chromatography was used more in industry. Yoichiro Ito introduced advanced techniques like centrifugal chromatography. Later, new technology made chromatography faster and smarter. UHPLC or ultra high performance liquid chromatography was developed for better results. Chromatography are used for analytical chemistry, pharmaceuticals, biochemistry and proteomics, forensic science and food and beverage testing. Now I will explain the difference between the mobile phase and stationary phase in chromatography. Basically, the mobile phase is the part that moves which carries the substance that we want to separate through the system. For example, like water or alcohol which acting as a solvent. And this substance that dissolve well in it will travel faster. Meanwhile, the stationary phase stays in place. It can be something like filter paper or silica gel which helps separate the substance based on how strongly they stick to it. So the stronger the attraction, the slower they move. In short, the mobile phase moves the substance along. Meanwhile, stationary phase holds them back depending on how they interact with it. Next, let's look at the two common types of chromatography. The first is paper chromatography. The stationary phase is the paper and the mobile phase is usually a liquid like water or ethanol. It's simple, cheap and often used to separate things, things like ink or food coloring. The second one is thin layer chromatography or known as TLC. It uses a thin layer of silica or alumina on a glass or plastic plate as the stationary phase and an organic solvent as the mobile phase. TLC gives more accurate results and is often used in labs, especially for for things like drug analysis or plant compounds testing. Let's look at what the RF value actually tells us. So the RF value or retention factor is basically a ratio that helps us figure out how far a compound travels compared to the solvent in chromatography. It's super useful for identifying different substances in a mixture. To calculate the retention factor, it is equal to the distance traveled by the compound divided by the distance traveled by the solvent front. So I'll give an example to make clear. Let's imagine a spot that moves 2.5 cm and solvent moves 5 cm. So in that case, we just divide the 2.5 divided by 5 cm. And then at the end, you will get the retention factor of 0.5 cm. Now, characteristic that we have to remember about the retention factor is they are always between 0 and 1. If the RF is high, that means the compound is more soluble than the mobile phase, so it moves further. And if it's low, the compound is more attracted to the stationary phase, which moves more slowly. Now, let's look at experiment paper chromatography of candy food dyes. The objective are to separate and identify the different food dyes present in the color coatings of candy and lemon using paper chromatography. Second, to observe how dyes with different chemical properties move at different rates in the solvent. These are the list of materials that we need to use. Next, for the procedure prepare the sample, first use a dropper to place a single drop of water on the petri dish. Set an enamel candy in the drop of water and leave it there for 3 minutes. After 3 minutes, flip the candy over so its other side is in the drop of water, leave it there for another 3 minutes and then remove the candy. For the procedure prepare the paper strip, first you need to cut the paper chromatography into strips that are each about 2.5 cm wide and 12 cm long. Make a strip at least one inch longer than the height of your larger jar. Cut three strips for the food coloring samples and add additional strip for each amendment color you want to test. 
Next step, draw a pencil line about 1 inch from the bottom end of each paper strip. Use a pencil to label which candy color will be spotted on each paper strip. Use a dropper to make a spot of the candy dye solution on the pencil line on the strip. Let the paper strip air dry and then reapply after 3 minutes. Repeat this 3 to 5 times. Prepare several strips for different M&M candy colors. For chromatography separation, add 1 over 8 teaspoon of the salt to 4 cups of water. Stir until the salt is completely dissolved. Use a binder clip or tap to attach the paper strip to a wooden skewer or pencil. Place the wooden skewer across the opening of the beaker. Pour the small amount of the salt solution into the beaker. Place the wooden skewer with the paper strip across the opening beaker. The bottom of the strip should end about 1 inch above the bottom of the beaker. The paper strip should touch the liquid but the pencil line should not be submerged. Lastly, for observation, let the liquid rise the paper strip until it almost reaches the top. Let it stand for 30 minutes to several hours. Remove the paper strip from the beaker and mark with pencil how far the liquid goes. And then analyze the result. Here are the results of our candy chromatography experiment. As shown in the picture, the red, yellow, orange and blue sample each produce a single spot on the chromatography paper. However, the green sample showed two distinct spots, yellow and blue. While the brown sample separated into three different spots, red, orange, and blue. Now, let's look at the measurement of how far each color component travel. Developing solvent moved up the paper by 8.2 cm. The red component travel 3.2 cm. Both the orange and yellow component travel 4.4 cm. The green sample split into two. Yellow moved 2.2 cm and blue moved 4.1 cm. The blue dyes travel the furthest, 5.6 cm. For the brown sample, the red dye traveled 3.0 cm, orange component moved 3.8 cm, and the blue dye traveled 4.6 cm. Now, let's move on to the calculation of RF value. The formula is RF equals the distance traveled by the color divided by the distance traveled by the solvent from. Here are the RF values for each color. Red got 0.39 cm, both yellow and orange got 0.54 cm, and blue got 0.68 cm. Green has two spots, yellow and blue. Yellow got 0.27 cm and blue got 0.50 cm. While brown has three spots, red, orange and blue. Red got 0.36 cm, orange got 0.46 cm and blue got 0.56 cm. Now that we understand what chromatography is, let's take a closer look at how it's used in real life from the food we eat to the medicine we take and even the food that powers our parts. Chromatography plays a vital role in making our modern world safer and more efficient. The first one is food testing. In the food industry, chromatography plays a huge role in making sure what we eat is safe. It helps detect harmful addictives, toxin, and artificial colorants in foods. For example, it's used to check for contaminants in milk, juice, and meat products. Techniques like TLC, thin layer chromatography, HPLC, high performance liquid chromatography, and GCMS, gas chromatography, mass spectrometry, are commonly used. In fact, regulatory bodies like FDA rely on chromatography to enforce food safety standards. The second one is pharmaceutical industry. Chromatography is critical in the pharmaceutical world. It's used to purify active drug ingredients such as steroids and antibiotics, ensuring they're safe and effective. It also helps measure drugs concentration accurately, which is vital for proper dosing. Once advanced techniques, Kiro HPLC is used to separate enantiomers, molecules that are mirror image of each other, which can have very different effects in the body. Next, biotechnology and biopharmaceuticals. In biotechnology, chromatography is used to separate and purify biological molecules like proteins, enzymes, and DNA. It ensures quality and consistency in recombinant drugs, which are made using genetically engineered cells. Special types like ion exchange, cell exclusion, and affinity chromatography are used to achieve high purity levels. The fourth one is chemical and petrochemical industry. In the chemical and oil industry, chromatography is used to purify hydrocarbons and analyze additives in fuels. It can detect impurities and volatile organic compounds in products like gasoline. Gas chromatography GC and GCMS are the go-to techniques here, especially during oil refining and fuel quality testing. Now we've come to the end of our presentation. In short, chromatography is an important method used in science and industry. 
to separate and study substance in a mixture. It plays a key role in areas like forensics, medicines, environmental testing, and food safety. From complex mixture to clear result, that's the power of chromatography. That's all from us. Thank you for your attention.